everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is doing okay. Before I get started, uh, I want to remind everybody that we are still in the midst of a fundraiser to support all of the work that we do uh, in the inner city, uh, black communities, black families, uh, everything from our research center to our think tank to program development and implementation like Black Man Lead. Uh, our programs for mental health for men and women, uh, domestic violence, intimate partner violence, uh, and so much more advocacy programs. Uh, we've been in the game for 30 years. We're still pushing strong, but we need your support. Uh, if you follow me for any stretch of time, you know the work we do. You know the energy and effort and the passion at which I do it. So again, I'm calling on you to support the work we do. I'm going to take uh, today a topic that has been pretty much a topic of comic relief and cautionary tale tales um, but has some very 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 strong uh, cultural and social implications beyond what is seen on the surface or beyond what is uh, obviously observed in the the space of the people who are actually experiencing it. One of the problems, uh, if you want to call it a problem, uh, with being uh, famous is you give up a sense of your privacy. You give up a sense or a right even to a certain amount of privacy. But I do believe no matter what you do, unless what you do is in a direct relation to certain parts of your privacy, and it sort of plays off into this. Your personal life uh, should have a space that you can retreat to. And then there are people, you know, that was that are so popular by, I mean, to the point to where that was never possible for them. Uh, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, uh, and others. But almost every professional athlete that is of top 50 caliber in their sport has to deal with this. People recognize them. People see them. People target them. I'm talking about specifically here, Zion Williamson and this ongoing uh, Twitter char uh, charade uh, with Mariah Mills. Um, I'm not going to get into all of the detailed gossip bullshit that is going on. If you've been out there you know it's going on. It's been going on a while and I stayed away from it, but I'm looking at it now and there's some things in it that really bothers me. So I'm going to come talk about it. The basics of it, for those who don't know, Mariah Mills is supposedly, uh, and I'm saying that because I personally haven't verified it and don't plan on verifying it, uh, supposedly, allegedly a porn star. She obviously had a sexual relationship with Zion Williamson, the uh, New Orleans Hornets basketball star, um, and supposedly got pregnant for him. Well, whatever happened between them uh, got her to the point where she decided to out him and embarrass him and drag him via Twitter primarily, and I'm pretty sure on Instagram, uh, through the mud and you know obviously uh, everybody's laughing and talking about how stupid he is and all these other things like that and um, it sort of reminds me in less of a explosive outpouring of negativity the same way that PJ Washington from the Charlotte Hornets, Hornets was targeted by Britney Renner. Now, the difference with Britney Renner is she wasn't a porn star. She was, um, from at least that I know about. She was, however, quote unquote, an Instagram model, or whatever that takes to qualify for that. You know, if that's what they're calling it and you make money doing it, call it what you want to. But she was an Instagram model and she had dated a number of professional athletes. Uh, quiet is kept. She is supposedly the person who hipped Colin Kaepernick to the whole uh, black struggle thing because he wasn't really down with that before he started dating Britney. 
Now, how true that is, I really don't know, but that is, when I was looking into the whole Colin Kaepernick thing, the kneeling and all of the stuff, first he was sitting before he was kneeling, and that's when I got, you know, it, it got brought to my attention, and I said, okay, here comes a problem, and here it came. But Brittany dated him, Brittany dated a couple of other people, and ultimately, what she did is she went to the University of Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken. The University of Kentucky is what PJ played at. And was attending games, peeping this kid out. She was in her late 20s. He was a college student. She couldn't get one of the older heads to fall for it, so she got him. But, you know, him thinking he's being smart, we're like, hey, you know, I'm down with you and everything, but I want you to marry me. So she married him, got pregnant by him. Once she had the baby, within two weeks, she was filing for a divorce. So the whole thing was a come up. You can't tell me anything different. I could be wrong, and if I am, God forgive me. But I tell you what, Coach Prime, and those who don't know who Coach Prime is, Deion Sanders is Coach Prime. Coach Prime, when he was still at Jackson State, peeped her game so heavily, he brought her down to speak to his team. So his team would be up on game to know how it is out there. Being a former athlete, what I can tell you is the game is real. They're, I mean, they're doing everything out there from uh, bait and switching to uh, turkey basters to everything you can imagine. And and it's not, you know, like they, they want you to think, you know, it's all about hood chicks. It's some chicks out there that's got professional careers and their side hustle is trying to catch someone with, with paper slipping. And it's real. And it's real big in the city I'm from. In Houston, it is probably the capital. Uh, I remember back in the day, man, like cats I knew that played ball, whether football or basketball, another place. When they would come play in Houston, if their wives never traveled with them, they traveled with them to Houston because they just did not trust what was going down here. That's the reason. And it ain't just a strip club that... Um, God... I don't know why his name not coming to us. It's as it's, it's, it's big as he was, and he's in the biggest he is even now. Uh, but uh, Hart, James Harden, there's a reason why he wants to come back, and he had so much fun in Houston. Houston has that thing going on. Everybody talks about ATL and all that, just being from H and having been a part of that life way back in the day. I can tell you it's different. But what I can tell you is there's a problem beyond that now she's dragging him through the mud uh she's dissing him up first thing i'm gonna say is this i have advocated for my sisters being respected and protected right out the box you can go back and as far as you can see anything or read anything from dr rick wallace you have seen me advocating for the protection and the covering of our women and that is extremely important for me but let me tell you something it needs to go both ways. We can't be out demanding black men behave a certain way with black women and then think that it's funny when a black woman does this. Now, if he were to go off the deep edge and do something, he would be totally wrong, which he would be. But at the same time, we need to call this out. Now, from what I understand, her Twitter account uh, was finally suspended. You know why it was suspended? What? Because she was dragging it through, sharing all their personal business, doing all that stuff. Um, it was because she shared a sex tape between them. I mean, whatever it is, and here's the thing, and this is this is this goes back as far as Kobe. Look, guys, and the, the, the and, and it's not just athletes. Anybody that's got something going for you, that you you're on your rise, you're an attorney, you're a doctor, you are inventing something new. You're, you're you you got something. You got a dream. You got a vision. You're going somewhere. Trust me, women recognize that. I'm going to also say this. While the spotlight right now is on my sisters, white women are worse. They don't do it as colorfully as our women, but they're literally trained to do it. That's why a lot of our athletes end up with non-black women specifically white women and I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna peep this game to you I'm trying to drop game and I'm trying to share some things I'm trying to call some things out uh, and this topic just happens to be the topic Zion Williams and Mariah Mills
but this goes way beyond that. Go back. Okay, first of all, let me tell you something. Everybody always talks about how when the black man makes it, you know, how he ends up with, quote unquote, a white woman, uh, uh, as Dr. Umar calls them, snow bunnies or whatever. Uh, you know, he end, it, they end up going out. And, and those of you know me, no matter how things got with me, and that, life was sweet at a time, financially. Never ever was it in my mind to be out there with anything other than a sister. I wish I'd have behaved better, but I've never had any desire for anything else than someone that can relate to me. Now, doesn't mean I was perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I grew up though, thank God. But here's the thing. They are trained and conditioned early to recognize potential. Black women are talking about and trained, I am not going to marry. I'm, I'm not going to marry or date potential. So the black woman wants it already there. They want to be able to see what you got. The white woman is willing to sit up and say, I see what you're capable of doing. I'll step in. I'll even do a little bit of something here and there to make sure you get that. Then I'm going to sit back and I'm going to reap the benefits. So if you look at a lot of these cats that end up with these white chicks, those chicks latched onto them their freshman year in college. They looked at, they were a, they were a four chipper, five chipper, five star, four star recruit. Oh, good chance he's going to make it. And so they get on them. And then now with these NIL deals where these kids getting paid in college, they really latching on to them early. Now, am I justifying jumping over? No. Y'all know how I feel about interracial marriage. Now, if somebody gets married, I'm going to love my brothers and sisters either way who marry outside. I'm going to love you. But I'm just going to sit up and tell you, we need to be conserving and loving ourselves. And to me, the way I love me, I can't love nothing but a black woman. I'm sorry. It's just like, I mean, I see, I've see. i seen women who aren't black that I've looked at and said, man, she's pretty attractive. But then the first thing on my mind is I can find a black woman look just like that. And so out the, right out the door with me. But this whole Zion Williamson thing, number one is if he was doing her the way she's doing him, we'd be dragging him. We'd be dragging him. It wouldn't be entertainment. We'll be talking about how sorry and trifling he is. We'll be talking about canceling him. We'll be talking about he all this other stuff. And she is just like literally everything out there. And like it's so much stuff that I'm not putting out there, uh, you know, because number one is I don't know what is true and what's not true. Number two, uh, it's out there. If you want to go see it, you can go see it. But I want to put enough out there so we know what we're dealing with. Young brothers, number one. And this is no shot at anybody because everybody is somewhere. So everyone is somewhere. So porn stars, strippers, and all that stuff. I love all my sisters. They're, everybody's somewhere. But I'm not marrying one. I've got friends that were strippers when I was I was, you know, out doing my thing. We tight. And I'm not saying now that if I ever decided, you know, whatever. Uh, Cause I'm still in this space I'm not ready yet But when I get ready You know I'm not disqualifying anybody Because my background You know If people could easily dis I, I, I'm not I'm judging your heart And where you're at And where you're carrying yourself And everybody grows at a different place Everybody goes through things Everybody's got demands on their lives I'm not judging anybody I love everybody But you gotta understand something Young cats There are certain things That are just rain true you got to know what you're dealing with. When you're talking about somebody else, if you getting down and you flowing like that, wrap it up. I don't care how good it is. I don't care how sexy she is. I don't care what good she whispers in your ear. Wrap it up. And then the thing with PJ uh, Washington, it's like she married dude just to get the bag. Divorced him two weeks in. You can't say you tried. You can't say you worked on the marriage. You're two weeks in. I, I, I might, it might be two weeks. I might be a little off. Two, no, not two weeks. I take that back. Let me straighten that out. Let me restrain. Two weeks after giving birth, so she was married to him long enough to get pregnant, have the baby, because that was his stipulation, which was smart to a certain extent. But you got to look at what she came through and what she had done. You weren't the first brother that she had got after. She had her mark set on a professional athlete. 
She had tried a few times and could never ever secure the bag. So she tried someone a little less mature, a little less streetwise, a little less aware. And she had to sit up and say, I do to do it, but she secured the bag. Now, I don't know what else went on in that relationship. So I'm putting a disclaimer on that. I don't know if he was abusive. I don't know if whatever, but the way it came across, the way the story came out, the way it went down, um, that's, that's what went on. Now, if I'm out of line, and there are some things that I don't know and it comes to, I will come back and I will sit down and I will give it a whole 20, 30 minutes of apology and retraction. It's not the first time that I've misspoke because I'm speaking from what I know and what I saw and what I sensed and my experiences and a lot of other different things. Most of the things I'm gonna to talk to you are scientifically backed. That's what I do, I do research, I learn, I teach. But there are also things that I talk about that, I come, that come from my experiences as a human being, as a man. And so all of these things come together and sometimes I'll get carried away, especially when I see things like that. Young kid out there, get caught up. And it doesn't matter what her age is, she's 50 million years ahead of her. She's out there in that game, that game, the porn game, makes the stripper game look tamed. So if she's out there in that game, she run, she she can run laps around him as far as game is concerned. So he's caught up and whatever. And again, I'm not making him a victim because he's a grown man. But again, coaches, fathers, mentors, we got to get these young men in and teach them, number one, that a body count doesn't make them a man. Number two, to protect themselves and their financial futures by wrapping it up number three before they put their heart into anything be aware of the background from which a person is coming because that background is going to play a major role in who they are and how they behave with you now it could easily be a kobe like situation with zion and again i don't know because all i know is she's going ham you know She's going ham and she's literally just dragging and pulling and pushing and everything else. And so it could be a situation where it's like Kobe. Kobe bring in little Blondie. Bad move, but then let me leave it alone. Kobe's my favorite player, but that's the one thing I wasn't ever cool with. That whole little, all these black. Never mind. Oh, Kobe's deceased, so let it go. But. Anyway, he brings in Blondie, knocks her down. One mistake. He's done. He wants her to go, so he tells her to get out. But I think he used the B word. And so all of a sudden, she's raped now. Now, this broad was so treacherous. She had multiple semen samples inside of her. First of all, why y'all knocking down people y'all don't know without protection? We, I mean, and this was 20 years ago. So, look, we're at a point now, even, even back when Kobe, Kobe was in, but definitely now, we're at a point where professional athletes are brands in and of themselves. That means that you literally are a monetary force in yourself and you need to protect your brand because now your brand is getting drugged up and down the street you're going to have people who really don't want to touch you as sponsors because of this negative connotation and i mean you got to do a lot to get uh your account suspended on twitter now because you know it's the freedom of speech place with elon musk so you know but she, she, she did dirt. My whole thing is this. Again, I'm not that person that judge a person because of what they do. Everybody's in a space, but I, I also know what level I want to live my life. I know where I want to be and what I want to do. And I know the type of woman that I'm going to need in my space. When that when it's time to fill that space, I know the type of woman I want. While I can love on anybody and, you know, conversate with anybody, encourage anybody, and really just be cool with anybody. I can't have just anybody in my space. I need somebody that has their head together, that knows enough about themselves and loves themselves enough to 
carry themselves in a certain way. Uh, it doesn't mean that people don't make mistakes. This isn't about a perfect person. I'm not perfect. This is about choosing someone that all things considered, they're going to handle you in a certain way. And, you know, and those of you who know, know that, you know, my marriage and everything with Marion didn't go as planned. But we have a very good relationship. And there's a level of respect because I tried my best to carry myself as a man and to love her as a man. And she carried herself as a woman while she was around me. I don't see her doing anything different. Her personal life is her personal life, but I don't see her carrying herself in a way that was outside of how I viewed her. Now, it didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to, you know, and, you know, I'm dealing with that. And, and as long as I'm dealing with it, I'm be dealing with it. And I'm good with that. I'm good with the fact that I'm dealing with it. But that's a difference in saying, okay, it didn't work. And she came in and she took me. You know, I'm not saying that. She came and she took me. She she got me, dog. She got, yeah, nine, 18 years. And the whole people go, 18 years. She get, No, she got you for life. You don't stop parenting that kid. Trust me, I've got a bunch of them. You don't start parent, you don't stop parenting that kid at 21. At 18 and 21. You parented. My oldest will be 38 in September. I'm still parenting. It's just different. You literally just signed a lifelong contract with a woman that cannot stand your guts. You know, we've got to do a better job. And that's an area that we need to do a better job of. And I'm not saying I've got it nailed down. But what I am saying is we got to do a better job of selecting and then we got to do a better job of sustaining i think a lot of our relationships are salvageable but i think we live in a culture where it's easy to throw stuff away because everybody's only focused on what's going on with them i'm not happy i'm not getting what i want so the hell with everything and i don't think you can build anything that way in real life because that 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 novel idea of this perfect woman that novel idea of this perfect guy will always build up an expectation that cannot be met you know he may have the bag but he's got a bad attitude and he cheats she may be a great cook and she may be this but she's mean or she cheats or she and and, and all this stuff so what we need to do is we need to realize we need to work on ourselves we do we need to work on ourselves and we need to build a standard within ourselves that ourselves demand a certain thing and that we will not settle for anything less. And it doesn't mean, again, that it's going to be perfect because we are not perfect beings. What it means is that when you got someone that genuinely cares about you and you genuinely care about them, you find ways to get through things. I think we need to get back to that. I think that, you know, this whole idea of it's this way or nothing keeps producing broken homes broken relationships and you know I, i'll be honest with you man when i was 20 something it was all right i got a whole life to figure this thing out at 50 something it's, it makes you think too it makes you appreciate the people that stay in it again i am not advocating staying in abusive relationships i'm not advocating staying in a relationship with a person that makes you miserable I'm saying if you got somebody and you look at them and you say, I know they care about me, but there's some stuff right here. Figure that shit out. Trust me. People talk about the dating pool shit. I'm not dating. I didn't already say the shit. Not dating, not doing it. Whoever's going to be in my life is going to have to find a way to be there. And there are ways that it happens. And then I'll get to see them. I'll get to know them. And then I'll sit up and say, hey, look, what about, but this whole just going out dating people, fuck that. I'm not doing it, ain't go do it, not doing it, I don't care. And and anybody who knows me knows this ain't new for me. I didn't date, my first date was Mar Marion is after I already told I wanted to be with her. Didn't mean I didn't know her, I knew her for over a year before we got together, but that's just how I am. That whole going out, doing all that, I'm I'm not I'm not sitting up and uh, I'm not doing that. So on that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. I've been at the cigar shop for a while, but the whole thing is, first and foremost, I hope her account stays suspended if that's the way she's gonna go. Again, I don't know. Maybe he pulled a Kobe on her. He told her to get to kick rocks. 
And so this is her way of getting back at him. Or maybe he's not claiming the kid. I don't know because I didn't get into all the gossip of it and, and all that. I know what keeps flowing to me. Shit you can't miss because it's coming at you. But I haven't written, I haven't read one tweet, but I heard she's got Twitter blowed up. If you type her name in shit, the next the next 20 damn entries is Twitter. So obviously she's just going on tirades and rants and shit and all that. But with that being said, my whole thing is we've got to do better to develop our boys, socialize our boys. We need to also develop our girls, socialize our girls. We need to have a standard of how we're going to carry ourselves. But we need to pull our young men who actually are going to be put in situations where they're going to have quote unquote the bag to know how to manage that. The idea that I got this bag doesn't mean run through everything you can run through because you got an opportunity. It means you're gonna to have to be very, very careful with how you manage what you're doing uh, and what you're doing uh, and, and how you're doing. You're a brand now, manage a brand protect and secure your financial future and that's by making wise choices with how many children you have and with whom you have them and on that note look i'm gonna get ready to get out of here uh again like i said if you believe in the work we're doing at the odyssey project um all the way through you saw the first the beginning of the video if you believe in the work we're doing we're doing go in the description box click the link and give on that note i'm out of here